Episode 6 of Tulsa King begins with Route 66. Like Stallone, Route 66 is quite old but still is amazing to watch. A man on a stable looks inside his barn and sees his horse pilot missing once again. And once again it is just cruising in the middle of Tulsa with no care in the world. Stacy and her partner at the ATF have a mole in Waltrip's crew. Roxy the redhead has information on a new Italian mafia running around town. Stacy immediately tries to get her back on point about the biker gang, but her partner is hooked. His name is Dwight, she says, and Stacy's partner is now going to report this to the FBI. Back in New York, Pete is enraged at his son Chicky for failure to stop the package from assaulting Dwight's daughter, Tina. He said if he knew what he'd done he would skin him alive himself. Chicky tells his dad Dwight is out of control and both him and his daughter need to die. He gets a mad slap from his dad in return and is embarrassed as his dad tells him that's a line no one will ever cross. Meanwhile, Dwight goes to Tina's store and closes the door. He reveals that he killed the package. Tina is in shock and cannot believe what he has done. He tells her that in this game there are lines, and the package crossed them. Tina tells Dwight he just ruined her life. He tells her that no one will come after her that only he is in danger. Dwight returns back to Tulsa and sees Tyson. His first question is what happened to the car. Tyson told him what happened to him when Dwight was gone and that he got locked up. They take off and immediately go to Bodie's store. They see a sign that says they are currently closed down as Bodie does not answer his phone as well. Back at the stable, Roxy walks up to Armand and tells him that her boss wants to sort out the drama between the two crews. Armand looks at her and says that he'll deliver the message and cannot promise anything more than that. Dwight finally makes his way into his crew's home base and walks in. He is beyond happy to see Mitch and tells him what the hell happened when he was at New York. Mitch explains to him how the bikies shook Bodie and Tyson up. Later on his daughter Tina gets a call from her dad. He tells her is checking up on her. She says that she is getting phone calls and no one is talking on the other line. He tells her that he'll call her back. He then calls one of the men that works with Pete. He tells him that he wants everything to cool down and so Dwight tells him to come out to Tulsa and meet. The man says he will ask Pete first and see if he allows it. Dwight tells him okay and we cut scenes to the following day where we see the pothead of all potheads. Bodhi is meditating after his stressful week and gets a loud knock on his door. He gets up and sees FBI agents telling him they want to talk to which he tells them okay. Meanwhile they decide to raid his shop and destroy the place inside out. They cannot find any weed or money, then, an officer tells them there is a safe in the back. The mobsters then decide to have a meeting about Dwight's proposal. Chicky reckons it is a setup and Pete once again tells him to shut up and that seeing him will be a good idea. At the same time, Dwight has a sit down with Waltrip. It goes the way you would think. Dwight tells him off, and tells him that there will be no negotiations as he is Mitch by his side. They go back to home base and eat dinner when Armand points to the door. They turn around and see Bodhi. Dwight tells him where the hell he has been and Bodhi tells him the FBI came knocking. This warrants him a pat down. And Dwight continues the questions and tells him what did he tell the FBI. He said to Dwight that he declared that they are business partners and that they can fuck off. Dwight is impressed and points to Mitch. Mitch then comes out with bags of cash on him and Dwight laughs when we see that he took the cash out of the safe in Bodie's store and replaced it with a cigar. Bodie is so happy and goes in for a hug when Dwight puts his fists up as a joke. His crew laugh and he tells Bodie he has his back and gives him a hug. The next day, Dwight goes to his local coffee shop once again. He looks at his watch and the waitress asks him what's wrong to which he tells her, the horse pilot is not out today. She tells him they are going to put it down for escaping so much. Dwight then asks her for her name and she tells him Spencer. She also says it's her last day working at the shop. Dwight has an idea and asks her if she likes horses, which she does. He takes her to the stable where Pilot is. He goes straight to the owner and tells him that he wants the horse and gives him some cash. Meanwhile at the bar where the bikers hang out, Waltrip talks to his number two, Groom, and goes over their plan for Manfredi. That's when the red-headed mole comes in, asking too many questions. This is Groom's girl, and Waltrip tells him she must learn manners. Groom then walks up to her and tells her to shut her mouth. After buying the horse from its owner, Dwight brings Pilot to the Fenario ranch. He makes a deal with Margaret to train Pilot and house him in her stable. However, Margaret agrees only on the condition that Dwight makes proper arrangements for the horse in a week's time. The next few scenes are the main point of the episode. Dwight goes up to Mitch and tells him, that if he is interested he wants to go into business with him at the bar. Mitch tells him he'll think about it. We then cut to a scene where Tina is walking her kids out of the car when her husband Emery goes to park his car. He comes walking home and then from behind him Chicky comes out of nowhere and belts Emery up. He even breaks his arm in the process. He then gives him a few kicks while casually walking off. Back at the bar, Dwight and Mitch are closing up when bullets come through breaking the window. Mitch and Dwight get down and as Dwight goes to look he gets shot at immediately. 
He tells Mitch to grab his gun. Mitch crawls and grabs his gun and they both go around the house to see the biker shooting at the bar. They both then open fire and instantly kill him. Dwight double checks he is dead and then Mitch looks at him and tells him that he would be pleased to be business partners with Dwight and shakes his hand. If you enjoyed this episode leave me a like and subscribe, until next time.